Hi, this is Dave Weiss with the AmokArts.com video blog of the day. I just wanted to take a moment or two and talk about what I've been experiencing for the last few months. I've been working on a production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And while this is for everyone who, who listens to the blog and reads the blog, I especially want to share this with my friends from the cast and crew of Ad Alpha. Um, this has been my first show, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I want to thank you all for making me feel really welcome and supporting me as I try to learn to do what you guys do so well. The story of Joseph is one of my favorite stories in the Word of God. And I think it, the show does a great job of telling the story. There's just one thing that it really doesn't touch on. And the reason for that is pretty simple. This actually happens after the show ends. It's a shame because it's an overriding theme throughout the whole show. We see part of the part at the end of the show where the brothers are reunited and Jacob lives to see Joseph and everything is good between them. There's just one problem. The brothers have done something really bad to their brother Joseph. I mean, they sold him into slavery. And now he's pretty much all but king of Egypt. And Joseph's brothers start to worry as Jacob dies whether or not Joseph's forgiveness is real or whether it was just a courtesy to their father. Genesis 50, 15 tells a story. It says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong things we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The theme of it is really this, what man meant for evil, God used for good. It's such a crucial thing in this story and in your life. Joseph really couldn't help how his brothers felt about him. He was the product of a lot of circumstances beyond his control. He was born out of competition between two sisters, one loved and the other despised. He couldn't help that his dad played favorites. About the only thing he did wrong in the whole story was told his brothers his dreams. That was really a dumb move. If your brothers already hate you, you probably shouldn't tell them that God told you one day you'll rule over them, even if it's true. But he was 17. What would you do with news like that at 17? His brothers wanted to kill him. One brother, Reuben, got to them. And he got them to throw him in a well instead of killing him. Most of them intended to let him die in that well, but Reuben wanted to return back and rescue Joseph after he had been humbled a bit and after the brothers had a chance to cool off. The brothers sold Joseph while Reuben was away. Joseph could have given up when he was a slave, but he didn't. He followed God and he rose to the top of Potiphar's household. He could have given up when Mrs. Potiphar tried to seduce him, but instead he followed God. He could have given up when he was thrown in jail, but instead he followed God and rose to a prominent position among the prisoners and with the guards. He could have given up when the butler forgot about him and he spent two more years in jail, but he waited on God and God delivered him. He was sold at 17. And by 30, he was the ruler over all Egypt, only answering to two people, God and Pharaoh. His brothers sold him to be a slave because they hated him, but God used all things that happened to him in his life and to raise him to the position that would eventually save all of their lives. Even Joseph's blunder telling his brothers the dream was used to set the whole thing in motion. What man meant for evil, God used for good. If I had more time, I could show you how this act led all the way to working for your good and for mine. But for now, for now just let me say what happened to Joseph also happens to us. All of us have things happen to us that stink and are painful and unfair. People do rotten and nasty stuff to us, sometimes intentionally, sometimes by mistake. When it happens, we have a choice. We can sit around and be miserable, or we can look for the ways that God will use it for good. I have my own example. 
My whole life, I wanted to be an artist more than anything else. When it came time to decide on a course of study, a time to decide what colleges to go to, I wanted to go to art school and my parents had other ideas. They said there was no way they were going to support that. No son of theirs was gonna spend his life starving in an attic. So instead, I made an immature decision, went to a school for something for which I had no aptitude, mainly because it was far from home and I flunked out. I was mad at my parents for that for years. Now they didn't mean this for evil, they love and care about me. And they thought they were protecting me, but for a while I could see nothing beyond how hard this one thing made my life. I look at it differently now. If I had not gone to that school, I would not have flunked out, which meant I would not have been in the area. Maybe I would not have made some of the mistakes I've made, but I also would not have met Dawn, which means there would be no Chris. I never would have met any of you and would never have had the opportunities that I've had. Any time I've been allowed to make a difference would not have happened. What would my life have been? I don't know. What would my life have been easier? I don't know that either. And I may never know, but I know this. This life has been a good one. And everything I've experienced, good and bad, has helped to make it so. When bad stuff happens, and you're mistreated in any way, don't dwell on it. Don't let it make you bad. Don't let it make you do stupid things. Look for the good that can come from it. You might be surprised. If you don't believe me, just check out the story of Joseph. God bless.